In the extreme ice-bound regions of the Earth, something unprecedented is happening. Everywhere, glaciers and ice sheets have begun breaking apart and accelerating towards the oceans faster than ever imagined possible. Can we put the brakes on it at any point? Do we have that much control over it? There are concerns that we get to some point that the changes become pretty much unstoppable. Over the history of the Earth, ice has frequently advanced and receded. But now it's changing in ways we don't fully understand. With the future of the ice in question, photographer James Baylog risks everything to capture what's happening on film. This is one of the scariest, dumbest things I've done in my life. Where I'm laying right now was underwater just six hours ago. I'm not feeling real comfortable out here. His incredible imagery is witness to one of the Earth's most powerful geological forces, a force that for the first time in modern human history is radically changing the planet. Extreme ice revealed right now on this Nova National Geographic special. James Baylog has a near fatal attraction to ice. Oh, God, that is intense. His fascination is leading him farther and deeper into the cryosphere, the frozen regions of the Earth. I feel like I'm not on planet Earth right now, like I'm in some, truly some extraterrestrial environment. The world isn't supposed to look like this. What began as a photographic assignment has become a mind-blowing odyssey into an unpredictable world, where entire landscapes teeter between solid and liquid states. On the Greenland ice sheet, a crack opens, and a mile-wide lake pours down a 3,000-foot chasm. But this water is just drilling down into the ice sheet. One of the world's biggest glaciers shears off an iceberg that is nearly 1,000 feet thick. You're not supposed to be able to witness things like this. Human beings don't generally get to see these massive features of the landscape changing and vanishing in front of your eye. Changes in the ice are normal. It is volatile and constantly in flux. But what Baylog is witnessing suggests something extraordinary is going on. His passion is to document it and help scientists understand these monumental changes. Many of the changes we're seeing are unfolding faster than our ability to really understand them. Our relationship with ice is one that has very dramatically, if not violently, shifted from one of, eh, don't worry about it, to one of, boy, you know, this is one of the most important controllers of the future environment of the planet. Baylog's work frames one of the most important scientific questions humans have ever faced. How fast will the world's glaciers and ice sheets melt? And what will all that melting mean for us? As scientists try to figure it out, Baylog is finding evidence to help answer some of these questions. Got it. His extreme ice survey is the largest photographic study of the cryosphere ever attempted. He is deploying 26 time-lapse cameras on glaciers across the northern hemisphere and programming them to shoot a frame every daylight hour 
for three years. It is a massive challenge in some of the most hostile regions on Earth. So everything we're trying is getting thwarted, trying not to be frustrated. But the pain is starting to pay off, with thousands of frames revealing unparalleled changes in the ice. My hope is that it will be powerful and immediate enough that people will say, yeah, I get it, I understand it, okay, this is real. This is forensic evidence of the reality of what's happening. The fact that the ice is changing is nothing new. Over the millennia, the expansion and contraction of ice across the continents has fundamentally altered the planet, gouging out lakes and valleys and pushing man around the Earth. The waxing and waning of the ice sheets have been implicated in who lives where and what they do. And there are even some people have suggested that we're humans now, in part because we were responding to the changes in our environment that were linked to the growth and shrinkage of the ice. In the past, the cycle of ice ages and periods of warming were caused mainly by shifts in the Earth's orbit around the sun. But now, humans seem to be driving these changes. Since the Industrial Revolution, our burning of fossil fuels has ratcheted up the output of greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, which trap heat in the atmosphere. Temperatures are climbing, and the ice is melting faster than ever. I think that if we stay on the path we're on, we will change the amount of land ice, and therefore we will change sea level. The real questions, the more complicated ones, are how fast are we going to get there? How much is it going to rise? Can we put the brakes on it at any point? It is the speed of the melt that is most astonishing. And nowhere is it happening faster than in the glaciers along the west coast of Alaska. Glaciers are like massive ice factories. High in the mountains, snowfall builds up and is compacted over hundreds of years. Gravity pulls it down in colossal rivers of ice. Some glaciers flow all the way to the ocean, shearing off icebergs in a process called calving. Over the last 40 years, temperatures here in Alaska have risen about four degrees Fahrenheit twice as fast as the global average. Now, these rivers of ice are flowing faster and crashing even more spectacularly into the sea. Some people are taking advantage of the glacial fireworks while they last. Surfers towed in by jet skis are playing a dangerous game of chicken with the ice. It is rapidly calving glaciers like these that are the main contributors to rising sea levels. Alaska's Columbia is one of the biggest ocean-feeding glaciers in North America. In the early 1980s, the Columbia started flowing faster and began calving far more ice into the ocean than was being replenished by snowfall upstream. Baylog and the Extreme Ice Survey glaciologists are trying to figure out how much ice the Columbia is losing and whether or not it can survive. In the shallow waters of Columbia Bay, melting icebergs jam up before being carried away with the tide. This is the end of the line for the Columbia, a crystal maze of deteriorating ice that draws Baylog in. Out here. Basically, we're looking at a whole landscape full of crystals. It's a cool spot. There's a lot of power here. It seems to be calm. It seems to be still. 
but there's this constant energy of the sea coming and going and tearing this huge glacier away. Every time you go in here, you're taking a risk because these bergs are inherently unstable. But you get seduced by the beauty of it. You know, you just get drawn in. It's like the, the sirens of Columbia Bay pulling you in, luring you in, going, come to me, come to me, come to me. And you just keep following these beautiful objects back through the labyrinth. But okay, Jeff, right about on this line here. The light that really makes these sculptures come alive is bouncing off the surface of the water. So the bergs are lit from within. Oh. At the Extreme Ice Survey Camp, glaciologist Tad Pfeffer tracks the flow of the Columbia. As the glacier moves, it churns up dirt and rocks that collect on its surface. The Columbia is so vast, it's hard to imagine it vanishing. Pfeffer and his colleague Shad O'Neill are taking its vital signs measuring the speed of the glacier over several years to determine whether it's speeding up or slowing down. To do this, they fire a laser survey gun at reflective targets that they must deploy on the surface of the ice. pilot hovers a few inches above the glacier, O'Neill positions the target onto the ice. Pfeffer locks on to the target and shoots a laser that reflects back to the stationary gun, recording the position. I got it, you're good. Come on back. Okay, first one down. 1.1 kilometers away. The target moves with the ice. By tracking its movement with a laser over several days, they will be able to calculate the speed of the Columbia. Just down the fjord, Baylog and extreme ice survey engineer Adam LeWinter climbed down to one of the time-lapse cameras they installed a year ago. Oh, yes, here it is. Here. Still all there? Yeah, the camera's here, but nice. what happened to the glacier? When I was here a year ago, the calving face was just right there. All right, we have pictures. The time-lapse brings to life the dynamic nature of the glacier, the ebb and flow of the ice as it calves. It's a revelation. Every time we, we open up these boxes and download these images and bring them up on the computer and play them back, your, your eyes are popping out of your head. Although calving is normal, the Columbia is hemorrhaging ice so quickly that in the last 30 years, the glacier has receded 10 miles up the fjord. Baylog's time-lapse images capture a rate of retreat that shows no sign of stopping. In the last year alone, the Columbia lost another half mile of ice. I really never expected that we were going to see changes of anything like this kind of magnitude in the period of time we had to work on this. This rapid calving of the Columbia is a symptom of its decline, but it's poorly understood. If Pfeffer and O'Neill can figure out what's causing it to calve more ice, it may help them predict the glacier's future. They're taking a curious tack by using earthquake technology to crack open the mystery of the ice. 
They are installing seismometers that pick up the vibrations of ice quakes, tremors that reverberate through the ice as it calves. From the seismic data, a pattern emerges that points to one clear culprit, water. They knew water was melting the ice 